Hey everybody, after Kimberly's event on February 11th at Gateway, I'm going to present uh, an hour on creating a home on the inside. It's going to be easy, fun, social, interactive exercises that everybody can do and enjoy. Uh, we'll wind up with three methods of self-connection you can take home and use if you like them. The rest of this video is some ideas about building a home on the inside, ideas I won't have time to talk about in the hour I have on February 11th. It's easy for us to talk about home on the outside. We all have language for this. How safe do I feel with the people I live with? How safe do I feel on the streets in my neighborhood? How secure do I feel with my rent and mortgage? How safe do I feel in this country, in this world? However, we're not so clear and people have much less language for how we feel at home on the inside. I think for a lot of people, the reference point is the Wizard of Oz movie, where Dorothy clicks her heels together and she prays, there's no place like home, there's no place like home. She's praying. Besides clicking her heels, what is Dorothy doing? She's really praying for a home, hoping for a home, hoping to go home, wanting to go home, dreaming of a home, and what we know in the last 30 years of working on inner home stuff, you know, not just me, but other people as well, is that that can be too passive. And if that's too passive, not much really happens. John Roger had this idea of a portable paradise. And I think he would include that in his category of spiritual exercises that he would call contemplation. What does home mean to me? What does it feel like, look like, taste like, smell like? This is closer to what the modern idea of feeling it real, having a home inside, claiming a home inside. How do you want your home to feel inside? How do you want it to look from the outside? How do you want it to look on the inside? What color are the walls? What furniture do you want to have in there? What accessories do you want to have available? Generally, one room at a time is going to be much easier if you get the, the look and feel. So if we want to feel it real, how do we do it? We have to get more into having, and claiming, and a lot of that we do through sensory images. What does our house look like from the outside? What are the colors of the walls on the inside? Generally, it's gonna be a lot easier to picture just one room, just your bedroom or your living room. Just forget about the kitchen, just one room. What does it feel like? Later on, you can build a 16 room house, but that's gonna be much more difficult to feel. That's gonna be more of a head experience, and what we want is more of a heart experience. So in your living room, you may have a fireplace because home is where the hearth is. What's the weather like? What's the climate like? And finally, who else lives with you? This is going to be a real determining factor. Feeling real says, if we feel it real, feel the peace of it over and over again, it will become more and more of an inner reality for us. And this really is building a home on the inside. Yeah, that's what we want. The benefit of this is that even when turmoil is going on in the outer world, we can go to our inner world and remember peace is present inside of us. There's no guarantee this is going to work. However, that's not the goal of a guarantee. The goal is simple. Just remember home inside yourself one more time than you forget. Just go one more time from turmoil on the outside to peace on the inside one more time. That's all we need to do, just one more time. Now, a lot of people are aspiring to this through meditation and yoga, but it's much more fun to talk about Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street. What happens in Mr. Rogers in the intro? He comes in with his, his office jacket, shirt, and tie on, and he takes off his office jacket. He hangs it up lovingly. This is while he's singing, and he puts on a, a sweater. He zips it up, and then he takes off his office shoes and puts on comfortable sneakers. And what's he doing? He's demonstrating that he wants to let his hair down, so to speak. He wants to relax. He wants to feel at home. And he's inviting small children who are watching his show for them to feel at home and comfortable and relaxed. And then what does he do? He goes into subjects that are likely to interest a three-year-old, like giraffes in the zoo, things like that. And what does he do? He goes into fantasies with puppets. 
entertaining himself with little puppet shows exactly the way a three, four, or five-year-old does. We all know that a lot of stand-up comics like to do cynical parodies of Mr. Rogers. However, if you look at it with, without a jaundiced eye and you think of it in terms of inner child work, he's making his own inner child feel safe and he's broadcasting that so that your inner child can feel safe. And this can mean something to you if you're a child and you only have one parent. Another thing that happened during the time when Mr. Rogers was big and Sesame Street was big was sensory awareness exercises. When these are done skillfully, these can make you feel more at home in your physical body and in your emotional body as well. You can look those up on Amazon uh, under the author Bernard Gunther. When we grow up, we have more sense that what kind of home we wish on the inside is up to us. Now, a lot of this has to do with our parents. And of course, unresolved issues from our family of origin are the meat and potatoes of personal spiritual growth work. When we work out a lot of these issues of feeling controlled and manipulated by our parents or imitating our parents without wanting to, we mature into this sense that I can decide for myself what I want to feel on the inside and who I want to be on the inside. We no longer have to feel or behave like our parents were arranging for us to feel. Now we have choice. Once we grow up, we can pick any positive quality we wish to have on the inside and claim that as home. Practice that and claim that as home. The same way nurturing parents create a home for a physical child, son or daughter, each of us as adults is in charge of creating a sense of home for our own child within. If we practice, we can feel real a home on the inside. To learn more about having a home on the inside, I recommend that people explore the topic of deepest innermost values. Mark Robert Waldman has a TED video on that and also the idea of an internal vertical column of light. These are all ideas about self-connection. And so, may I ask you, how do you connect with your feeling of home on the inside?